Well, hey folks, research here again. Here we go with level three of Civil War Secret Missions by the History Channel. This one is The Gray Ghost, all about John Mosby, one of the most famous of the uh, the rangers, the partisans uh, operating behind enemy lines. Not an official soldier, uh, but effective anyway. Civil War, small and irregular militia groups were called upon to attack enemy supply lines, perform raids, and generally wreak havoc on opposing armies. One such group was led by John Mosby. He earned his nickname, the Gray Ghost, for his uncanny ability to elude the Union Army time and again. After the successful raid at the Fairfax Courthouse, Mosby set his sights on the reserve picket post near the Alexandria, Loudoun, and Hampshire Railroad in Northern Virginia. This area was a prized target due to its proximity to the Union capital. In federal control, the town was completely taken by surprise when Mosby descended with his rangers, intent on disrupting Union supply lines and capturing enemy troops. Men, we have the explosives. Y'all know what to do. We need to get in there, do our work, then get out. Let's move. You know, they don't actually say in this level which guy Mosby is. When your buddies get killed, another one just respawns. So maybe the player character is Mosby in this one. They don't, uh, they don't make it very clear. You know, after the last two levels, the urban combat of this one really kind of catches you off guard. It's, uh, it's suddenly very fast-paced, and it's it's actually quite a lot of fun. You can see the uh, the design here. Look at this. It's a Civil War game. It's still a platformer, still making you work for the goodies. That's okay. Anyway, you saw there in the briefing there, it was talking about John Mosby's attack on the Fairfax Courthouse. Just a sec. There we go. So, Fairfax County Courthouse, really interesting uh, thing there. He conducted that raid in 1863, conducted it way, way inside Union lines. I mean, they were practically by Washington, D.C., so very surprising that he managed to pull that one off. Uh, so he went inside of the Fairfax County Courthouse, and he captured three Union officers, including Brigadier General Edwin H. Stoughton. Uh, he wrote in his memoirs later on that he found Stoughton in bed and roused him with a spank on his bare back. Uh-oh. Nuts. Well, that's okay. Let's give that another try. So, he found Stoughton in bed, roused him with a spank on his bare back. Upon being so rudely awakened, the general indignantly asked what this meant. Mosby quickly asked if he had ever heard of John Mosby. The general replied, yes, have you caught him? I am Mosby, the Confederate ranger said. Stuart's cavalry has possession of the courthouse. Be quick and dress. Mosby and his 29 men had just captured a Union general, two captains, 30 enlisted men, and 58 horses without firing a shot. Mosby got the rank of captain after that one, and he went on to have a very successful raiding career. He was really quite a character. He also survived the war. Let's take care of these guys here. So Mosby survived the war, uh, ended up working for President U.S. Grant, just like so many of the other fellas. Mosby, interestingly enough, was not in favor of secession. He did not think that was the thing to do. He, uh, he joined the army anyway and ended up as a, uh, as a partisan ranger and and we know how all that went, but um, but he was an interesting character. Uh, he was the kind of guy that uh, that you see a lot of the current Civil War books and movies, you know, trying to trying to create characters that were like him, somebody who's fighting for the Confederacy while not really agreeing with its uh, with its decisions or actions.
A lot of fences in this level. A lot of fences, a lot of clipping issues. It's very, very difficult to shoot anything when you're near a fence because the uh, the, the boundary box there uh, tends to extend into an invisible area. Very frustrating. All right, there we go. Almost forgot about that guy. Uh-oh. So, fun little pistol here. Colt Army, Model 1860. It's a muzzle-loading cap and ball, 44 caliber, single-action revolver. So you see how my guy's thumbing the hammer back every time he shoots? That's a, that's a single-action. Uh, it was made by Colt, uh, same guys who made that horrible rifle that we were looking at earlier. It was a very popular sidearm used by cavalry, infantry, artillery troops. There was a naval version of the gun used by the Marines and used by the Navy, but uh, but this was still one of the more popular ones. An again, classic Old West gun. Oh, and here's one of the bonus items in this level here, the, uh, the supply crates. There are five of them, I think. Neat. So this is it. You're running around. You're you're uh, you're blowing up warehouses. Uh, I'm not sure where these explosives are coming from, but uh, hey, that's fine. So Colt Army Model 1860, really powerful uh, little pistol there. Uh, the the Navy version of it was a 36 caliber, so it was a smaller uh, bullet. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. It featured a side hammer revolver. It was a creeping loading. Lever, uh, more than 200,000 were manufactured up until 1863, 186, uh, I'm sorry, 1873. So, uh, 1870s are pretty well the Old West at that point. Look at this clipping. It's not a hitbox issue, I don't think. I think hitboxes are just with characters. Ooh. Anyway, the reloading animation on that pistol. Uh-oh. Watch the reloading animation. Uh, and it, well, shoot. All right. So in the reloading animation, you see uh, the character pulls out. Jeez. Okay, you see that the character pulls out a powder horn and he's dumping powder uh, in. Uh, sure enough, the, uh, the, the Colt 1860 did not shoot cartridge ammunition. Uh, every single chamber you had to fill with powder and then put a ball in. And you can't see on the model here very well, but there's a lever underneath the barrel of the pistol. And so you would rotate each cylinder around uh, packed with powder, packed with a ball, and then you would crank this lever down, and it would pack the cylinder. Hmm. Uh, so it was a very slow reloading process. Um, let's see here. The uh, There was an Old West movie with Sharon Stone, um, The Quick and the Dead. Very silly movie. It was a Sam Raimi movie, uh, but uh, had some great scenes in there. It was all about a, uh, a contest of, uh, of Old West gun shooters. And one of the characters uh, uses a, a Model 1860 there. There's a scene where he's quietly reloading each, uh, each cylinder in there. And, and even for that period, which would have been 1870s, 1880s maybe, that would have been a very outdated gun to be using. So, so that was neat. Uh, that character, I can't remember that actor's name, but that's the guy who played, um, played Anderson, Captain Anderson in the Mass Effect series. Very deep, resonant voice. Uh, great voice actor. Havoc physics, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, 
Okay, so there we go. You saw the uh, little reload animation. Kind of a silly looking pistol. All right, there's another one of those uh, supply crates around here. I've got to go find it. I always look inside the wagons. It seems like such an obvious place that a game designer would put some secret item or box of ammunition, but there's never anything in there. It's not enough of a platformer that you can jump in there, so I, I see why they wouldn't bother. Look at this. Did it have to be all the way over here? They're really, really making you work to get all these things. Extra ammo, even though I just got some extra ammo. Pretty, pretty quiet around here. Again, let's take a look inside the wagon. Nope, nothing. Pretty, pretty much never anything in there. That's okay. All right, here we go. Last warehouse. We can try to bum rush it. Oh, but there's guys here. Uh, oh, uh, uh. That's right. Forgot there were guys on both sides. Okay, that's fine. The game is generous with its uh, with its checkpoints. I appreciate that. I wish Crimson Skies had more checkpoints. It would make it a lot more rewarding to do crazy stunts in that game if you didn't have to start the level from the beginning every time you died. All right, there's guys inside the warehouse. We'll just clear out both sides. There we go. Creep around the side here. You can see a box glowing to the left. Just bring that in there. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh two crates left. I forgot one. Oh! Havoc Physics, ladies and gentlemen, 2008. You know, Havoc Physics, I mean, it's, it's not the Havoc engine's fault. Uh, you know, Havoc was used in Halo, it was used in Call of Duty, uh, it was used in Mass Effect. Hell, it was used in pretty much... It, was it used in Mass Effect? I can't remember. It was used in pretty well all of the AAA titles of the early 2000s all the way through present day. I mean, uh, uh, there are still games using it even now. There we go. Uh, so I guess I missed one of the supply crates. That's too bad. Accuracy, 47%. <laughs> well, that's all right. I've already got my bonus objectives for this one. So there it was, level three. Look at that. Completed in time. Eight minutes, 45 seconds. They, uh, they made that one pretty short. See you next time.